summer in Manhattan. And the concrete warms up a little bit in the asphalt, but in a different way. It's the sound of jazz and festival time. I'm on uh, Lincoln Center Plaza, and it is a lovely summer day, and I'm seated with uh, that uh, master of the guitar, Tal Farlow. It's so good to see you. It's my pleasure to see you, Lee. It's a great, great pleasure. <laughs> well, here we are wandering through the plaza and uh, seated comfortably, and I, I know you've just come from a session with National Public Radio, and it concerns a documentary on a Twin Cities born, or rather Oklahoma born musician who spent most of his time in the Twin Cities, Oscar Pettiford, till he left and joined Duke Ellington and Charlie Barnett. Right, yeah. Well, we had an interesting conversation about him, and he was, uh, uh, as you know, was on several of my recordings, and uh, both on cello and bass uh, as a support and soloist, you know. And uh, the, the highlight, I think, was being joined by Hank Jones and uh, Ray Brown on bass and, uh, of course, Oscar on cello. So that's uh, one of the recordings we discussed. What recording is that for our audience? It's called Poppin' and Burning. Poppin' and Burning. <laughs> it's an LP so far. I don't think it's moved on to CD yet. It's in that collector's category and, uh, and hard to find. Right, well, yeah, yeah. What do you recall about that session? Well, it was, um, it was, uh, I guess, guess one of the last ones that I did for Norman, you know, I was with him for, for many years, and uh, uh, it happened here in New York. Uh, we were, uh, well, I guess he, he, he wanted me to put a group together, and I had been working, uh, uh, actually, Oscar took Mingus's place with Red uh, Group, and uh, we worked at we were working at the Embers, and uh, the, you know there were the Embers was a popular place for musicians to come hang out too, as well as o other celebrities, I might say. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, and so uh, sometimes when uh, uh, a bass player would come in at uh, Oscar liked, he would have him play the bass, and he would go down in the uh, kitchen, which was downstairs, and fetch his cello, which had a pickup on it. And he'd bring it up and plug it into my amplifier, and we'd play duet <laughs> there. And uh, and uh, I've forgotten exactly what happened, but it turned out that we said, well, why don't we take this to Norman Grand? So we got Hank, and Ray was in town, and we got Louis Belson's brother, uh, Hank, Henry Belson. Uh, uh, Louis Belson's brother, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so that was the, that's how that thing, it was just one session, and it was a little, little short for a, for an LP. So it went on the shelf, and didn't didn't come out until the uh, the label had been taken over by Japanese MGM, I think, or Polygram now, I think it is. So anyway, I got a call from them, and they said, "Well, we're going to bring that out because of this historical thing." So they put it together with some other sides that I did for Norman, and made a, a two, you call them a twofer, right? And uh, so it's got uh, those sides and that that one date, and it's called popping and burning, which is a, a phrase that is supposed to have been said by Wes Montgomery about me. <laughs> I came on the scene popping and burning, he says. <laughs> so. Indeed, uh, popping and burning. When you uh, think about Oscar Pettiford and uh, those nights at the Embers and uh, how you all work together, you and Oscar. Uh, what comes to mind? Well, I was, uh, you know, was one of the one of the thrilling experiences of my life. You know, I mean, that's uh, 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 he he was a big idol of mine before I ever got out of Carolina. You know, because he, he was playing on as you were talking about before uh, with uh, Coleman Hawkins. You know. And he did uh, Stumpy. Was there one named Stumpy or Stuffy or something like that? I think that they did it. And they, the engineer must have been in love with him because he picked him up so good. It sounded like a duet between T Coleman and uh, Oscar, you know, with some other guys sort of standing by. But uh, I remember that very clearly. And uh, 
Then it happened that he came through uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, with Duke's band. And I think I got to play with him in a little session that we had at a place that the uh, A&T College there had. Some of the students there had a place they called Artist Guild, a little lean-to that they had a piano in. And, and we jammed a little bit. Lou Donaldson was there, still in, in college at the time. And uh, then, of course, uh, maybe not too many years later, I was on the stand with him <laughs> in New York. And uh, yeah, what's that? Well, what great memories. Uh, I think uh, of those nights at the Embers, uh, certainly the intimacy of it all was just uh, so pleasant. And uh, between you and Mingus and, and among several others, Pettiford, it must have been just a splendid time for you. I'm thinking of this jam session that you described. What a life learning experience. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> well, that's the way things happen, right? That's the improvisation. <laughs> yeah. One day we get it right. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking with Tal Farlow. We're on Lincoln Center Plaza, summer in June of 1997, the 24th day. Thank you very much, Tal. It's a pleasure. I'm happy to see you, Lee. Say hello to all the folks out there in Minnesota and the west, the northwest. <laughs> I've been talking with Tal Farlow, a master guitarist in the history of jazz. Once again from Lincoln Center Plaza, June 24th, 1997. It's summer festival time in Manhattan. Tal Farlow has come into the area and he will join with other guitarists in a special salute to Barney Kessel. The friends of Barney will be gathering at Sylvia and Danny Kay Playhouse, Hunter College, Uptown Manhattan, and they'll play in concert together. Tal, welcome to Minnesota Public Radio again. Thank you, thank you. Well, there there is a movement in the world of guitar and there are thousands of guitars and there are all types and kinds, and you've designed some of them. And uh, Barney Kessel is a special person in this whole field. And you might just uh, uh, give us some observations of Barney and, and his, uh, his uh, muse. Well, Barney is, is uh, he's Mr. Jazz Guitar, you know. He, he, he followed right on the scene uh, Charlie Christians, you know. and. Uh, with, he was like a pioneer with the electric guitar, and um, and he was a, a tremendous musician. And he was also from the area of the country where uh, Charlie Christian came from. So, and he knew Charlie and played with him. So he was like as as direct a link to Charlie Christian as you can find, you know. And. Uh, uh, of course, I admired him ever since I heard him. I think the first time I heard him, he was working, he was making records with uh, uh, Artie Shaw, in the Gramercy Five, and uh, I knew right away he had some really lovely ideas, he, very much his own. Uh, he's, he's a very creative person and a, a intelligent, very intelligent guy. A joy to be around, and he's got some of the greatest stories that you ever heard. <laughs> anyway, when we were, we, when I went out to the coast with Red Norvo, uh, that, I knew that was one of the things I was looking forward to, would be getting together with Barney, and sure enough, that's the way it happened. And we wound up, I'd, every night I was off, I'd be over at his house playing guitar with him. So, uh, I, 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 I remember those, uh, those little sessions so, much, so well, really, uh, Joe, it'll be great to see him. I, I, I hope he does come here. And uh, I'm saying, I know I'm saying the same as uh, about a dozen other guitarists that are going to be on the stand too. And, I'm, and I, actually, I'm on the spot because I'm sitting in his chair between Charlie Bird and Herb Ellis. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, I, uh, Remo will be there. Remo Palmieri and. Uh, uh, Howard Alden, I think Sal Salvador, Johnny Smith's coming in. So, I mean, you really go see a head guitar show there. <laughs> what a gathering of the, uh, of the most important figures in jazz. Uh, you know, I was thinking about those sessions that you and Barney went out on uh, after your regular gigs. 
What uh, in that life learning experience did you uh, get out of those experiences? Oh, you mean with Barney? Well, we were we we actually jammed together just the two of us a lot. Even here in New York, he he came to the place where I was living on, on the east side, and uh, we uh, we even cut some r records on the old uh, disc type. You know, we we're talking pre-tape days, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we uh, we we just got along real well. And then later, uh, you know, the great guitars when he uh, he joined with Charlie and Herb, and uh, I uh, started. And I guess in the early '80s that I I was uh, called to sit in each of those chairs as one or the other would be unavailable for some reason, and uh, and uh, so and then the, then the. Uh, uh, Pete Lambros that was managing on he he added me to it so it was four of us for a while and we toured around had a great time we went to see and played uh, in Europe and here in the States great all, all those guys are wonderful tell Farlow it's a pleasure to meet with you here in New York City and just uh, wish you the very best from Lincoln Center Plaza here June 24th, 1997. I've been sitting in with that master of the guitar, Tal Farlow. And from here, uptown Manhattan, in this cultural center, we send you all the way back to the land of lakes country in the upper Midwest, close to the Northern Star.